Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, tan's still doing well. Still sunny, but it's uh, sort of uh, cumulus today, you know. It's about 6,000 feet, as you aviators to say. Anyway, I'm late again. Don't ask me why, I'm just not good at getting to work early in the morning. I'm like, you know, I think the staff start at 8.30. I think they do. Oh, it's payday today, isn't it? Last day in May. I don't know, how do you pay your staff? A lot of surgeries pay them full weekly. Because uh, I think the only the only reason to pay people full weekly is because it helps them budget, doesn't it? It sort of gives them 13 months in the year. You know, like they've got less to pay, but they get paid less, but uh, they get it more frequently. So, and also it fits in neatly, doesn't it? It means you've got 13 paydays where everyone gets exactly the same money. So if you're paying like just a flat rate, basic monthly pay then, or, or four weekly amount, or, or even a weekly amount, then your 13 paydays fits in quite well with that. And it's not much more um, onerous than 12 uh, paydays, which is what I do, but I do 12. And, uh, but that's because I pay hourly, so really what I just type the hours in and you know, you can have paydays whenever you like when you pay hourly. And weekly, 52, replacing 52 paydays with, by, you know, from 12 would be just uh, daft. I, I actually do all the payroll, so um, we use a program called QuickBooks, which I effing hate. I hate QuickBooks. They have a, it used to be quite a good program. There used to be an, um, two accounting programs. Sage was one and uh, that was sort of the main one. And then they very quickly went mainstream and sort of went corporate and started getting too big for their boots and started charging loads of money. So there was a lot of um, cheaper competitors came out. And uh, Intuit was the firm that came out with a cheaper sort of version of um, uh, an accounting program, you know, like uh, one that enabled you to do management accounts and profit and loss, management profit and loss accounts and things like that. And if you're a, uh, like an accountant, you could do your whole uh, everything, but uh, even for a small business, you could, you know, you could really manage your company. I've always sworn by a few things, spreadsheets, scanners and uh, accounting software are the three things that I always sort of get get him get organised first whenever I start a dental surgery. But uh, QuickBooks very quickly, you know, started taking the mic. And uh, by taking the mic, I mean what would happen is they'd bring out um, like a, a, a feature upgrade, a few they'd upgrade a few bits, and then expect you to pay for the whole lot again. And then uh, you know, next like six months later, another minor upgrade, have to pay for it all again. And what happened was people cottoned on to that and they just stopped upgrading. They said, no, what I've, the, you know, the version I've got is good enough, I'll just... So then what QuickBooks did was they started changing the file format. So that uh, every time they upgraded it, they, they uh, changed uh, the file format so it wasn't backwards compatible. So what they call a hard fork upgrade. So if you, uh, if you had a... You know, if somebody with a more recent version, like your accountant, sent you, modified your file and sent it back, you couldn't read it because you had the old version, you had to keep upgrading to keep reading the new data files. Um, and then they decided to get even more greedy and they decided to put it online. So they put QuickBooks online now, which is, you know, patently just about possible, just about, you know, by taking away all the bleeding edge features of it and, uh, uh, you know, sort of nobbling it, and then if you go on the bulletin board, you see all the accountants are complaining that they've recommended their clients go over to QuickBooks Online, but then they find out that half the things that they're used to doing with the standalone program are not working. They not, don't exist online because they haven't been coded, or they're just too difficult to do, or they're just too expensive, they're not going to get around to it. So, in the meantime, to try and encourage you to move online, they started soaking the users who had the standalone version, so they're asking us for 50 quid a month or something now to use it. 50 pounds a month. 
to use a sodding overblown spreadsheet but you know I mean again you know if your business is turning over 200 300 thousand then I suppose 50 pounds a month just to, to know where you are is, is reasonably good value but um, they're being undercut by other firms like uh, there's one that begins with an X but it's pronounced with a Z which I can't can't remember they now there are other and there are open source accounting programs as well and I think if I was starting from scratch I'd use an open source accounting program so but don't get into QuickBooks QuickBooks is is an American company and uh, they you know obviously the bulk of their work goes into making sure that they're compliant with American law and it does things like American payroll and then when they branch out into the UK it's like a small market for them and it's not possible just to tweak a few parameters and turn an American payroll into a British one. I mean, obviously, it's the basic principles are the same, but, you know, they've got the inland revenue, all these different ways of working out tax and different times of the year when the rates change and different rates, different bands and everything, and they bloody hate it. They really do not. They're the prime example of people who are in a business, I think, they don't want to be in. They, they want to do what Sage does. They want to get into the big corporate contracts, but for some reason they got stuck with uh, the small business, SME, small and medium enterprises. Uh, but they do okay, don't you worry. They've gone into uh, home loans in the uh, United States. They're in the big, they're big in mortgages, online mortgages, online mortgage approval, approval within minutes. That's the next thing. Go around and do, you know, like the Americans do where they open their house one, you know, just for one day and they say, like, if you want to buy this house, come around, we're having an open house. Try and induce a sort of a competition in supply. So uh, you feel like you're bidding against everyone else who's, um, excuse me. Oh. I had to put my foot in the shoe quickly and the tongue's got stuck, so I just had to unstick it. So I'll do my shoes up when I get to work. Honestly, I used to be like this when I got to school, you know, I was like, you know, I was always the last boy in just before the bell dinged. And I'm going a different route today, you might find it's a bit smoother because of course they've shut the road. Well, I, um, I shut the, uh, I, I came back, being a contrarian, I decided to come back with the closed way to see if it was still closed. And sure enough, all the signs were up, closed, closed, diversion, hard luck, turn around take five miles around the wrong way but I just kept driving I thought what's the worst could happen is I'll just kill a few workmen you know probably I won't be hardly harmed at all so I just kept driving 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 and then what happens nothing come out the other end they've done nothing they have done nothing all day yesterday apart from have their coffee from their thermos read the Sun Put the signs up. Okay, lads, that's enough for one day. Let's all back to the depot. <laughs> so, although it's 8.30 in the morning and it's quite highly likely I could probably get through again the short way and it would benefit the paper shop if I could because now I can't go past the paper shop so I go and get the papers. <sighs> uh, I'm not gonna bother. I don't think they'll be there at 8.30. It's possible that they've created a hole in the road that's large enough for me not to either drive over or around. But you know, why? Well, I'll just go there. I'll just go this way. It's only for four days now. So yesterday, do you know why? You know, you might say why angry? Why are you angry? Why are you angry? You know. But there's no point in getting annoyed over the slightest little thing, you know? You'll just get blood pressure, you'll, you'll type A personality, you'll just angry firing yourself into an early grave. And to a certain extent, you've got a point, yeah? My blood pressure is not as low as it used to be. So, I'll tell you why. So I think the teachers of the world are to blame. I don't think that's too harsh. I think my, I'm angry at stupidity 
that's what makes me angry. But fundamentally, that's why I'm, I'm on a crusade against stupidity. And the unfortunate fact is, I find it more and more and more. Everywhere I look now, there's some degree of stupidity going on. You know, it really is not a meritocracy, this, this, the way that things are run. There are, there are really, really stupid people at every level of public life now. I'm leaving, leaving aside the inbred aristocracy, I'm just talking about the other highest levels, you know, um, the uh, House of Commons, the House of Commons Select Committees, all the, the government, the, the, sort of the government, the CQC, everywhere you go you find stupid people, you know, not, uh, and I don't blame people for being stupid, I think, you know, you're obviously you're born with what you're born with. I had a woman in yesterday, she said her teeth were too big. Very attractive young girl, but with body dysmorphia, you know, just very happy in her life otherwise, but just convinced that her teeth were too big. So uh, she says to me, can you make my teeth smaller? And I'm like, she's about uh, 20, this girl. So I said, uh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you can. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't. She's like, yeah, but I know you can. I know you can. You can. I'm like, no, actually, I can't. <laughs> I said, that's like going into a doctor's and saying to the doctor, can you make my head bigger? I said, I can't, it can't be done. So. <laughs> just, oh, I said, look, you're, you know, you just have to learn to love yourself. You're, I mean, look at me, you know. I mean, this takes a lot of loving. <laughs> and she's young, she's attractive. There's nothing wrong with her, okay? Apart from the fact that she thinks her teeth are too big. And I think, and, and I'll tell you what, the thing that flitted across my mind is that there are probably dentists that would have done it, you know. I said to her, now, if we make your teeth smaller, you're going to end up with a load of gaps in between them, aren't you? And she's like, oh, but, you know, how much, oh, yeah, she said, how much does it cost to have your teeth trimmed? How much, uh, short back and sides for your teeth, how much? How much does it cost to have your teeth trimmed? Oh, I don't know. I do not know. I don't know about, I didn't, <laughs> honestly, that's it. No, that's my, that you're, you're, as that American comedian said, I've moved the line and then crossed it. That was it. I'm not, you know going to do any of that anymore. Anyway, where was I? Stupidity. Yeah, she wasn't stupid. She was just young. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so why teachers? I mean, the trouble is, right, I think that oh, 20, 30 years ago, we were, we were bemoaning the, sort of the loss of the grammar schools and the lack of standards, high standards in education and you know lack of competition on sports days and things like that and people saying oh no don't worry let a little let, let, let them just play you know let them just play they'll be all right they'll um they'll they'll turn out okay you know without needing to know uh, all the capitals of all the countries of the world and i think what the facts have borne out that that is actually not true they're, they're not okay most people i think are are, are terribly confused by the world today and are, have retreated into uh, cooking programs and antique programs and dancing programs. That's that's the, about what they can cope with and that's all they are being fed. So, <clears throat> you know, and it's to a certain extent it's too late. We've probably lost two generations to this idea that uh, you don't, you know, that <laughs> The idea of a sort of a general election can be decided on the basis of, of Jeremy Paxman playing a parody of himself, literally paradising himself, uh, you know, doing, doing what's supposed to be a hard-hitting verbal joust with the two potential candidates for Prime Minister. And, and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed for Jeremy Paxman. I was embarrassed for the BBC. But most of all, I was embarrassed for this country. That that, that was the level of debate. That, that was people are being asked to cast their votes based on this on this comedy program, you know, which is all we're going to get uh, really in terms of you know. There's no serious 
there's really no serious, there's no intellectual discussion about the direction that the country needs to go in, that where we've gone right, nobody ever discusses where we've gone wrong. Oh, you know, I mean, nobody ever admits a mistake. They, nobody ever admits a mistake to the extent that they just carry on making the same mistake, even if they know it's a mistake, and you can't even guarantee that they know it's a mistake. But if they make a mistake and realise it's a mistake, then it's a mistake to carry on not making the same mistake because it makes it look like it, it was a mistake. Do you know what I mean? No, you probably don't. That was a bit complicated, wasn't it? Never mind. Anyway, you get the general gist of what I'm saying. So, case in point yesterday. Had a patient in, wanted sedation. Talked her out of having sedation because it's not what she needs. Told, talked her into having pre-medication. So what's a good drug for pre-medication? Temazepam. So I prescribe her seven tablets of temazepam, okay? This is, not, this is not an issue for the serious fraud office or the drug squad. Seven tablets of temazepam. I have prescribed for one patient in probably 18 months. Actually, probably prescribed it for two patients in 18 months. So she rings me up. Oh, the pharmacy won't dispense it. Why not? They, they said uh, you need to ring them. So I think, okay, that's fine. They want to just double check the prescription. It's a private prescription. They make their big money on the NHS, so they just want to check. It's unusual for them. So uh, I ring them up and say, yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the prescription, it's fine. She says, no, you need to have it on a pink form. What, what's a pink form? It's a controlled drug form. It's something, something, something. So anyway, it turns out now, to prescribe seven tablets of temazepam, you have to uh, register with someone, somewhere, to do with NHS England. It might be the clinical... Uh, it's something, you know, CCG, one of these NHS doctors' committees or something. Then they give you a private prescriber number. And then they give you, then, a pad of pink forms, which you can't download off the internet, because, God forbid, then... then and it's pink. <laughs> so, it's the paper that is the authority, the pink paper. You get the, you can get the pink paper of authority, which the druggies can't uh, easily forge, like because drug drug people don't know anyone who's got pink paper, and um, and you then have to prescribe the tablets on this pink paper, and then the pharmacist will dispense them. And um, but it doesn't apply to Schedule uh, Four drugs. So there's you know there's all these schedules from one one which is like experimental drugs that are only used to torture people in Guantanamo Bay down to Schedule 2 which are the sort of the real what so regarded hard drugs like the heroines and then Schedule 4 are the opiates like the Valium and stuff like that and Schedule 5 is just anything that is a drug but not that worrisome and they don't really care about it but apparently Tamazepam is Schedule 3 so Schedule 3 you need a pink paper for Schedule 4 you don't so all the benzodiazepines are Schedule 4, except for temazepam and midazolam. Apparently they are, they are, they've been given the special privilege of being elevated to Schedule 3, which means that you can't prescribe them without a ton of bloody paperwork, which for seven tablets is honestly not worth it. So what's happened is I've prescribed a Valium, diazepam, which is, which is a worse drug is, and it's got a half-life of three days, so she's going to be dopey for three days instead of the uh, temazepam, which will be out of her system in five hours. So it, it, it's just it's staggering beyond belief. I mean, they've literally singled out temazepam and midazolam to, to put them in the schedule above because they don't, you know, and this pink form then goes to the pharmacist and the pharmacist then has to collate all the pink forms and then sends them off to the NHS England so they can know how much temazepam and midazolam is being prescribed. It's just, words fail me, you know, words fail me for seven tablets once a year. And it doesn't get done. Do you know what I mean? It's not like I'm saying, OK, there shouldn't be any control on controlled drugs. I mean, I, there should be. But the point is, when it gets to the point that the necessary treatment is not done, not carried out, as a result of the administration, the bureaucracy involved, then... Um, then uh, you're influencing the system, aren't you? You're influencing the market, you know, the system, the, you know, the government bureaucratic interference is interfering with clinical treatment, and I don't think that's right. So anyway, so she's got Valium, which doesn't need a piece of pink paper, and we'll just, I'll let you know how it goes. 
Okay, don't be stupid. <clears throat> Too many stupid people in the world. Don't need another one. All right, bye.